hello everyone. There are two of us that will present a bit uh, about Packet. I'm Frankishek and I'm the product owner of Packet, so I'll be the one that uh, should be happy to see all the new uh, requests coming and saying either yes to everything. And I'm joined by Laura, who is the more technical one and cautious and cares what, what, what to include in, in our code base. So what we have prepared for you, uh, we prepared a bit uh, recapitulation of the Fedora resources. Ah, closer, okay. So uh, a bit of recap of the Fedora process, then uh, what Packet can do in on this field, and then we'll show a bit how we get to the f state Packet is currently, and uh, what we are trying to do to engage with the community uh, and a lot of news. So with the first two parts, we'll try to be really quick because we've realized that there is a lot of new stuff going on. So uh, what can Packet do for you? Our ultimate goal is that we would like to make the upstream developers and downstream maintainers closer together and make friends of each other. So that's our ultimate goal. And how we are doing it? Uh, is splitting like packet into two parts. Uh, one is that we act as an upstream CI, so on GitHub or GitLab, we try to provide like builds using copper, tests using testing farm, uh, VM image builds using image builder, uh, Koji scratch Koji builds using Koji. So, and with the downstream part, uh, we are trying to automate like starting from the upstream release through the disk git, then Ko Koji and uh, Bodhi. Regarding the upstream CI, we will have a talk in the afternoon together with a, a guy from testing farm, so stay tuned to that. We will not touch this much now. So uh, let's take a look how the code gets to Fedora Linux users. So we are starting from the top. Uh, there is an upstream project on GitHub, GitLab, or maybe somewhere else. Then uh, we need to take the release, put the archive to the look aside cache. Maybe this will not be relevant anymore soon, but currently this is the state. Uh, and th uh, the new version needs to be also enhanced in the disk git. Uh, currently it's Pedure. Let's, we'll see uh, how much outdated this slide will be in the future. Uh, when uh, the code or new, new uh, changes are uh, made in the spec file, in this git, uh, we need to trigger a build in Koji. Uh, then if we have successful build, we can uh, move to the Bodhi and create a so-called update. Uh, and there is a karma like voting on the update. And if this is successful, uh, we the co uh, new version finally gets to the user that can use either DNF or GNOME software or anything to get the update. So yeah, it's a quite a lot of steps. And in Packet, we said, like let's help the people in this. So what we what we are trying to do is uh, automate as much as possible uh, and let the user act only when and where needed. So uh, now you don't need to check if there is an uh, upstream release. We uh, can listen to these events or uh, automatically. So uh, that's that's our job and not yours anymore. Uh, we can put the archive to the look aside cache and open a this git pull request with all the changes necessary. Then there is a step that we are happy to have for the user. So there is a review of the this git pull request. There is a CI included. So that's the step that Packet does not want to automate, uh, even though many people would like to see us automatically merge these things, but we want uh, at least a single step that, that is left to the real user to review the changes. If the review uh, is uh, approved, uh, the code is merged, uh, then we are automatically triggering the Koji build. Uh, then uh, if there is a successful build, we are creating a body update. So uh, mostly uh, you are interacting with, with the release only on the this git pull request. Uh, so, uh, how to do it? Uh, the first packet job uh, is the syncing of the release. Uh, 
that uh, and uploading to Lucas Hive Cache. Uh, we are ex we actually have like two two ways how to do this. One is proposed downstream through uh, uh, push workflow from upstream, and one is pull workflow from downstream. So let's take a look at the first one. This one, the push workflow needs to be configured on the GitHub or GitLab side, uh, and uh, uh, but the functionality is same, saving to the Lucas Hive Cache, opening the DB CR. The second one, pull from upstream, uh, you, you are configuring this in this git and uh, we are listening to upstream release monitoring uh, changes. There is a copy paste typo in the slide, sorry about that. Uh, but we are using upstream release monitoring so to get the new uh, information about the new uh, release so you don't need to touch the upstream at all. This is especially useful for the, if you don't have uh, access to the upstream project at all, or you want to uh, use PyPI or other other sources. Uh, still close. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we uh, when introducing these functionalities, we realized that people have various uh, opinions on this, and we can't make all of them happy. So we introduce a lot of config options, but the main one is actions. So a lot of what Packet does can be like replaced but with your code so you can like tweak the spec file, tweak the single step that Packet does if you don't like it. And there are also a couple of hooks so you can uh, combine it with some of your actions during that process. Uh, yeah, and this is like the ba basic, basic result of this, just the basic version pump uh, with the new changelog. We can take the changelog from an action or from upstream release or just make a generic one or from a commit. You can also define your own action. We are taking care of the sources. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe one more note. Uh, this is also available for the CentOS stream uh, with the exception of the Lucas Hive cache, which is more tricky to, to handle. Uh, regarding the Koji build, quite simple. We can react to any this git commit being made. By default, we are reacting to uh, merge pull request by packet, uh, but you can configure like anyone else. So uh, the nice thing about packet is you can just steal uh, any any functionality from packet you need, and you can just ignore what what uh, what's not not relevant to you. Uh, one new thing I'll take uh, we'll take a look at that uh, later on. But uh, currently we are finally supporting Citex, so uh, that. Later, yeah, <laughs> I see Anna is happy. Uh, yeah, uh, final step, when there is a successful Koji build, uh, we are creating body update. So nothing hard, just a sim simple part of configuration. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so, and is it actually used all of this? Okay, so I think we are quite happy to say it is. And especially uh, in the last year, we have seen uh, quite a growth and uh, in context of this presentation uh, you would be probably interested in the purple lines uh, which are the sync release runs and you can see that uh, like a year ago there were maybe around 100 projects using this automation and now we are somewhere around 500. Uh, so what happened? What have we changed? Uh, what have we implemented? So let's have a look at uh, the journey, especially from the last year. Uh, so firstly, marketing or more marketing. Uh, I think uh, we've uh, always tried to do some marketing, but we realized we are not that good at it. Uh, so we try to do more. Firstly, we try to uh, post more on the mailing list and we realized that even if we repeat something really multiple times, there is always someone who doesn't know about the news. So it's worth doing it. Uh, then second thing, which we've already been doing, but uh, we've tried to do it more frequently, are blog posts. So currently we do a blog post uh, once a week when we do the new deployment, and we announce the new things, new features, bug fixes, etc. cetera. Uh, but besides those, we are also trying to do more focused ones on uh, some new functionalities and describing these to more details. 
Uh, and then another thing uh, we implemented uh, was we created a Mastodon account because we wanted to have some place where we could communicate with the users more dynamically and uh, inform their, them about some other things, for example, workshops and yeah, uh, you will see that also in the other slide. Uh, then important thing was uh, easing the onboarding process. So when we came up with the automation for the release syncing, uh, we haven't realized that the onboarding isn't that easy as we thought, uh, but we realized this when the first adopters and users came and they started uh, asking a lot of questions. So how should the configuration look like? What should we do? Uh, how does this work exactly? And we wanted them to point them to some documentation or something, but we realized we don't really have a documentation for everything or it is not uh, that well described. So really the first thing uh, we've tried to improve was the documentation and uh, we have also tried to restructure it. So now we have a separate documentation uh, site uh, focused on the package maintainers uh, you can see the structure here. Uh, so we really tried uh, to do a lot of improvements, but definitely there is always space for improvement. So we are try trying to do this continuously. Uh, then the second thing, so for using package, you have to have a configuration file uh, and we've tried to simplify the process of creating it. So we started firstly with uh, creating some template uh, but then we ended up also with uh, providing uh, command line um, uh, command and uh, with that people can easily even in script uh, create configuration for multiple of their packages and with this script the configuration can be also directly pushed to the disk repository so everything is really simple to set up. And then uh, users can also ask us uh, for onboarding their packages. Uh, when they do this, this is just an um, issue in our, uh, our GitHub repository and then we try to prioritize it accordingly to other work uh, and help them with the onboarding of their packages. Uh, with that, uh, this is a related uh, point and that's uh, reaching out to the potential users. So besides the marketing, uh, there are still a lot of people who don't know that there is something like Packet. Uh, and also Packet is uh, definitely not suitable for all of the packages in Fedora. So we've tried to come up with a script to analyze uh, the packages that would be a really great fit for using Packet. And uh, with that, uh, we came um, to the list of maintainers who have a lot of these packages. And we've tried to reach out to them and uh, agree with them create a PR for them to showcase how Packet could work for them. Uh, and you can see such a PR uh, on the screenshot uh, on the right side here. Uh, then there were uh, potential users who wanted to use Packet, but maybe needed more guidance and also discuss some, um, some more detailed things about Packet. And for that, uh, we decided we will organize a workshop. So the first workshop was, I think, actually in-person workshop in Brno in Czech Republic. Uh, so it was a smaller one, but it was really nice. And we could see that uh, really um, it was a nice experience to be able to discuss mm, things with users and explain them how to set up things, etc. cetera. Uh, and after this nice experience, we've uh, decided we would like to do something similar also in the online space for people who are not based in Brno or Czech, Czech Republic. Uh, so we tried to create something that could mimic uh, the in-person workshop and we created a few rounds of the online workshop uh, that looked something like a screenshot on the right side. So it was uh, quite fun also for the users. So this mimicked the, uh, the Brno office and people could uh, come from room to room and in every room they uh, were focusing on some different part of the release automation. So it was quite fun. Uh, and also the workshop materials are available and also linked in this slide so you can have a look at them if you are interested.
we've also realized that it is uh, really important to track the progress. Uh, so we have improved the metrics uh, and how we are measuring these things. Uh, so if you compare the two graphs, uh, which you've seen before, and this one, here the number of projects really is a little bit below 500. And that's because in this graph we are checking uh, the projects which really merge downstream PR or code build or Boxy update and not only proposed uh, PR in this case. And we've also tried to improve the planning process. Uh, so our issue tracker or like this Kanban board is public. Uh, it is also linked in the slide. You can see there are different columns here. And mm, very important part is uh, when the issues are created there in the new column, we try to get to them as soon as possible. And we try to uh, decide the priority, uh, the area they are affecting. Uh, and we see how many packages or projects or users are affected by that, uh, which is a deciding factor as well. Also, what's the gain of this feature or bug fix? Uh, and then we can prioritize it, put it directly to the priority backlog uh, or backlog, uh, and uh, and then uh, it can also get to the refine from where we are uh, already uh, working on this thing. And I think that was all uh, for the improvements uh, on the journey. And now I will start with the fresh news and next steps and we'll uh, then hand it to Franta. So firstly, uh, as I said, package is definitely not suitable for all of the packages. And for a long time we have uh, had this restriction that uh, package could be used only for the Git-based upstream but uh, we are currently working on uh, making it possible uh, for packet to be used also with the non-git upstreams, uh, so you could uh, use it for your PyPI project or RubyGem projects or anything. Uh, you can already try this out with, uh, from CLI, and in service it should be available in a few weeks. And then, uh, more of a UX thing, uh, so currently Packet creates uh, divergent disk git branches, as you can see in the screenshot. Uh, the commit hashes are different for different branches. Uh, and oh, we are also currently working on uh, making this um, so that we don't create a divergent disk git branches. Yeah, uh, next one is, was finally a support for Cytex, so uh, just as I, I could mention that we haven't yet documented this, but maybe you can uh, like get it as a treat for you. You are here, so you can try it already, uh, even if without documentation, so that, that's really fresh. And you can specify like a group of packages and use them together and create a body update just for like the last one that you made it here. So here is an uh, example. Uh, we'll upload the, the slide so you can play with the as a first one, so that you can like enjoy, enjoy it as a, as a first and we'll uh, manage the documentation like in the following week or so. Uh, yeah, uh, reverse de dependency checks. We've been asked about this a lot, a lot, and uh, it's a hard topic, and if you don't believe me, you should rewatch uh, the Adam's talk from yesterday. It's a tricky one. So we spent a while on researching how to do this. Uh, so still on the research phase, but we've, uh, uh, we've realized that maybe Koshe as a tool that was implemented or uh, uh, is run for reverse dependency checks is maybe the tool. Uh, so we reach to Nikolai and at least one uh, thing that progress is happening is that uh, there is a copper plug in the Enable in Koshe's stage. So there is a possibility to uh, the first step to, to run these uh, checks outside of Koji. So we will not like uh, pu push so much on Koji. So, so there is a chance that this will uh, happen actually. Uh, our ultimate goal is to make it available both on this git side and also maybe on upstream side. And I've uh, uh, mentioned checks. So this is also another uh, part that someone is interested in build, someone in test, so, so it's a tricky one. So we'll see what, what will happen from that. Uh, so research phase, uh, related one. Uh, I've mentioned that this might be run on this git side. So 
this might be a uh, first step to uh, to run package on this git uh, as a CI. Uh, if you follow like where there's discussion about state of Fedora CI and Zool on this git side, uh, there is a lot of mess around and uh, so we in package realized that yeah, maybe we can help in this situation. Uh, uh, technically, we, uh, we have most of the code ready. We already listened for all the all the messages. We have all the integrations with Git forges. Uh, so yeah, technically we are prepared. Uh, people would be uh, some people would be probably happy to have one tool for for most of the stuff around Fedora. Uh, but the thing that we can do it doesn't mean that we should do it. So we are currently like researching if we should do that, and also how to do it because. Yeah, one thing is that we can do that. Uh, we can reuse the, like, uh, since we have integration with testing farms, so the plants can be reused. Uh, the existing integration with testing farms can be, uh, like, preserved. Uh, but the configuration, if this should run by default or not, so there are a lot of these small things to resolve. So if you have an idea how this should look like and if we should go to that direction, so re reach us uh, and we'll be happy to, to discuss. Uh, and hopefully help in this situation. Uh, yeah, uh, one another uh, point is that there a lot of people complain that Packet is just purely for Fedora. Uh, so we are happy to say that we are currently uh, also uh, working on the uh, open source support as a part of GSOC project during during this summer. Uh, uh, the student uh, so OBS Open Build Service is like all the federal infrastructure in one service, so we are trying to like uh, start currently with the with the build, similar to copper, and then move to the release, same thing. Uh, next project is so-called project Microhisa, and if you realize that there is a lot of various dashboard result pages around Fedora and uh, all the other ecosystems, uh, you might be a bit, uh, like said that you need to click through everything and get lost. So we are trying to uh, think about a project that, that, that could uh, get, get this together and maybe provide a single dashboard that, that could help. Uh, and before you ask me what it will be part of this and if my workflow will be supported, we don't know yet, uh, but we are interested in this. So if you could, uh, fill this form for us, that would be really helpful and maybe your workflow will be supported. Uh, and we are not starting any work yet. We are currently like researching if there is any and how people would like to see this, but if there is a demand, we, we can take a look at these. So thanks. Uh, and here, yes, it's time for questions. Um, when researching the uh, idea that you just presented for the dashboard, have you looked at the existing packager dashboard that the, I think that's your team, Fedora QA maintains? Yeah, we are aware of that. Uh, and there are also other like Red Hat related projects. So, so we are trying to take a look to not like overlap as much as like, we are trying to rather share as much as like information in code. So, so yeah, we are aware of that and we'll consider Either maybe this can be a base of this, maybe package dashboard can be a start of this. So th this is really not clear, but yeah, thanks for that. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you uh, consider or looked into supporting Forge Joe, considering that that's in consideration for the new Fedora Git Forge? Uh, yeah, we've already discussed that with people from CPE. Uh, so we inter, uh, developed a library, Python library called Ogre that should like uh, resolve the, have the, like unified API for uh, Pegu, GitHub, and GitLab. So that would resolve that if we like implement support support for for you there, that should be like really straightforward to, to support this. So so and also I'm glad that CP, as part of their research, they also included Packet and what would be like. Uh, effect on packet if there is a uh, git for change so, so we are in this context so yeah I'm thanks that, that thankful that they are aware of this um, and my last question was um, 
I know Packet does some fancy stuff for like generating source archives when you're using it, um, you know, upstream and need to generate an archive from Git. Um, is it possible to plug into that to generate a second archive uh, using like a vendor archive, which some packages that use modern languages like Go, Rust, or NPM I use? I think so. Maybe we could check. So maybe we can d discuss if. Uh, but if, if not, we can we can take a look. Also, that that's like a generic approach. If there's a lot of people asking for something, we can take a look. Yeah. So thanks a lot.